Hi, I'm Dan from Jess Records, and this is Mixed Down Mondays. So over the last week, I got asked a few times by different people if I would do a video on how the Bluey hooks up to, let's say, a home studio rig. Um, now here at Jess Records, we have everything going through a patch bay. But if you don't have a patch bay, that's okay. If you just have something simple like a uh, Scarlet or Apollo Twin, something that's four inputs or more, uh, it's a great place to start. Essentially, if you have an Apollo Twin and you want to hook up a bluey the best option would be to do things in post because you're going to be recording into the preamp on your inputs one and two let's say and you want to then mix with your bluey as you apply it to what you've recorded so to hook up the apollo twin to the uh, an external piece of hardware uh, you've got to designate two of your signals to an output. So it is likely going to be three and four is going to be a line level output. And then you're going to come out of that and go into the input of the Bluey. And then you're going to come out of the output of the Bluey into the input of one or two. So you have that, that will complete the cycle when you are dealing with inserting a piece of outboard gear with the Apollo twin. Uh, you got to come out of three and four and into one and two. Now you don't have to use both three and four and use both one and two, but th that is the sequence because they are set up as a, a stereo out on the console software. So just come out of three, come back into two, or come out of four and come back into one. You pick, it doesn't matter. Um, that is just the, the essential signal path or almost as if you're recording a, a live performance, a live uh, instrument, because you are sending the signal out and then back in. Now, if you have, let's say, a patch bay that's not tiny telephone like we have, let's say you have an XLR patch bay, you're going to have all of your ins and outs plugged into the front of the patch bay, right? And if you want to run a microphone into it, you're essentially going to go from the microphone cable into the patch bay, then you will patch on the out into the input of the bluey, and then from there you will patch the output of the bluey back into the input of your patch bay. Let's say you'll do five and six. You'll come out of five, and you'll come back into six. Now, uh, this can get a little complicated if you're not familiar with your DAW and how the ins and outs work. Most DAWs, and we use Pro Tools, has your ins and outs all splayed out for you so that you can de designate where the interface is sending the signal. I'll show you what that looks like here. So, uh, here in the studio we have the tiny telephone patch bay here. It's all labeled. Uh, the majority of my inputs are on the top and the outputs are on the bottom. Uh, and that's the same for the first half of the patch bay, but it's not the same for the latter half of this patch bay. I've got that flipped around. Um, so, for instance, though, if we are going to set up, if we were going to set up the Bluey to operate in post, what we would do is we will create a, a new track. This will be, let's just call it, uh, 1176 comp. All right. Now, I want to designate its input. So I'm going to say line four. Keep it simple. Uh, now, for the output of my already recorded content, I'm going to send that out of line three. All right. So this is what it looks like on the patch bay. I have all of my ins and outs hooked up into all my ins run from my preamps out to the Apollo 16. And then I have the outputs of the Apollo, uh, eight of the outputs of the Apollo 16 running right to here, nowhere else. So I can patch this into any of the other gear. 
So since I'm coming out of 3, I'll go to output 3 into the input of the Bluey. And then I'll come out of the Bluey, and I want to go into input 4, straight to the Apollo. So this way, when I play back this content, it's going to come apply it to what you recorded. One way to do that is you will have to go into your DAW, and inside the DAW, you will have your ins and outs. You will designate an out to go. So as you can see, I can now send this content directly to this channel. And then if I like my settings where I have them and I want them to stay where they are, and I'll print it. records, we have everything going through a patch bay. But if you don't have a patch bay, that's okay. If you just have something simple like a uh, Scarlet or Apollo Twin, something that's four inputs or... So right there is my compressed audio. And if I wanted to, I can just mute my channel. At, at Just Records, we have everything going through a patch bay. And you can see that it's now been altered by the compressor. Now that's one way that you can set up a compressor outboard piece of gear like the Black Lion Audio Bluey with your setup. And the other way is going to be a little bit more complex. Here we go. If you want to use the compressor uh, as you capture, one thing that you can do is you can actually just go directly into your compressor from your instrument, whatever it may be. Um, but traditionally, you'd go into your preamp, and then from the out of the preamp, you interrupt it uh, as a signal flow. You, instead of it going directly into your DAW from your preamp, you're going to be patching in a piece of outboard gear. I'll see if I can't show you what that looks like. So, um, I wanted to make a video on how to set up the Black Lion Audio's Bluey with a couple of different scenarios. But I have actually found that it's a little bit more complicated than me just showing you what I do here. I will post how I did it with a patch bay, and that's essentially how you can do it with any patch bay. It doesn't matter if it's Tiny Telephone or, or XLR. Uh, you're just going to come from your microphone to your preamp, your preamp output into the input of the compressor, and the output of the compressor into the input of your A to D converter. Now this is why it gets a little bit more complicated. I have a, a fairly unique setup than most home studios. Um, my studio is set up to be partially analog and partially digital. What that means is I have a analog to digital converter that has no preamps on it. When you're dealing with something like the Apollo Twin or Focusrite, Scarlet, or any of these items, uh, these interfaces, they are both a preamp and an A to D converter all in one. Mine's a little more unique, more set up like a traditional recording studio where you would see a console, uh, all of the inputs from microphones or guitars or bass or whatever are going into a preamp that's completely separate from my analog to digital converter. Down here in the rack, I have all of my outboard preamps. And then those feed into a patch bay, which then feeds into the Apollo 16. So the Apollo 16 has all 16 inputs coming from here, and that allows me to patch in between because I'm patching the signal before it gets to the computer. And that's why I can use the compressor before it gets to the computer, and I can record 
the live compression. Now, you could probably still do this. I will link to areas that you can go to depending on what you're using, if you're using the Apollo Twin, or if you're using a Scarlet or something of that nature. I will put some links in the description of where you can go to set that up properly. I did want to show how that's done, but not having an Apollo Twin at my disposal, I can't really give the best advice on how to do that. But I found links that I can send you to so that you can set up uh, your recording signal chain properly. Now, in the video that I just shot where I talk about um, using it in post, you can still do that. You can still use it in post. You'll likely be using something like console uh, to dictate what signal is going where, or you'll be using it in your DAW to dictate what signal is going where. You'll essentially need to designate two channels as a line level output on the interface, and then you will come in line level inputs as well. Anyways, it's going to get really confusing if I try to just talk about it. So again, there's links in the description of where you can go to set that up. Um, but for all intents and purposes, uh, what I showed you today with how you can use your DAW's ins and outs to link up external hardware, that's essentially still the same, still works the same. Lastly, if you really wanted to use a compressor as a live compression, you could put it in front of your preamp. Not entirely sure if that's going to be the satisfactory sound you're going for, but you could go directly line in to the compressor and line out of the compressor into your interface. I do hope that some of this has been helpful. I hope that the links that I'm going to share with you uh, get you the information that you're looking and needing. And I appreciate you commenting and um, spending time with me watching the videos and, and going over some of the things that we do here at Just Records. So once again, um, I do hope that this has been somewhat helpful. Uh, and thanks for watching Mixdown Mondays. Down Mondays.